It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Um, we ask that you all join in with us. This is our first Sunday back as the Mass Choir. Um, we want to give the Lord a hand that we're able to come back. Yeah. Praise God. So sing along with us. Join in with us. Matter of fact, let's get up. Let's wake up. Come on, y'all. Get up. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're going to go out with praise. We're going to come in with praise. Thank you, Lord.
Come on, if you don't want the Lord to pass you by, come on and give the Lord a hand praise this morning. Is there anybody up in the house that don't mind giving God praise this morning? The Sunday before Christmas, you ought to be glad that you're in the house. You ought to give God praise right now all over this sanctuary if you do not want God to pass you by. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. To our deacons, deaconesses, and all of you, our leaders and tr trustees, and all of you who come to hear word from the Lord on this blessed Sunday morning, God say, do not pass you by. And we thank God. Come on, let's give our mass choir another praise for coming back. Do not pass us by. Amen and amen and amen. Just a few announcements, just a few announcements. I want to thank uh, Reverend Richardson once again as our superintendent and Brother Charles Wyman, the vice superintendent, for such a wonderful play this morning with our Sunday school uh, team. And we thank God for all that was participated in that effort to make that a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience on this morning. We give God praise. Let's give them another hand of praise. As I look out, you look so beautiful in your red and your green and whatever else you have on. And next Sunday, we want to do the same thing on Christmas Day. And we're going to have a photo taken on next Sunday for those that come on worship. We want to get a photo shot of our sanctuary with those that are come in their red and their green and whatever colors are for Christmas Day that we celebrate God's day. And so we thank God for you on this morning. Uh, don't forget the food truck, the stuffer bus, stuff, stuffer truck will continue until this Wednesday, this Wednesday the 21st. Uh, after this Wednesday on Friday, we plan to go out to the Magnolia Park where the trustees uh, did a wonderful job in, in Thanksgiving dinners. And so we plan to go out there from the hours of 10 to 12 to distribute whatever we have, food, toys, to those that are in need. Uh, we want to reach the people. We don't want the people to come to us. We want to go to where the people are. And so we can bless those that are in need for this Christmas uh, year. Uh, not a whole lot to say this morning that God has been good to all of us, and we thank God for his blessing. Uh, come on, you ought to give God blessings. Amen, amen. And we thank God for our sick and our shut-in and those that are in the hospital or those that are at home recovering from whatever illnesses that have stricken them from being in worship. We praise God for all of them that are not with us on today. Is there any visitors visiting with us on this day? We want you to stand so we can recognize you on this wonderful blessed day that God has made to recognize you and say welcome to the Mount Zion Baptist Church. If you're visiting with us or returning, please stand at this time so we can recognize you. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. If you don't mind, tell us where you, who you are. Amen. Come on, come on, let's give this Jeff. Oh, come on, come on. You ought to give God praise for that. What a wonderful testimony. Do not pass me by. God have mercy. Welcome back to us. Welcome back to the, your home church, to where you are, are. This is your church. And so we thank God for you once again that you're here with us. To God be the glory. There was someone else. I, I saw you stand up and re let us re recognize you as well. Yeah. Amen. We bless your heart for being here with us on this morning. Come on, Mount Zion. Let's give God praise all over the sanctuary. Amen and amen and amen. We thank God for all of you who have come to witness on this day that God is good. And he's worthy to. I said God is good. 
When, when I say God is good, somebody ought to have a shout. God is good. Not sometimes, not, not every minute, but God is good all the time. Anybody got a witness to that? That my God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised? Half of you should have stood up right there. Somebody should have gave a testimony of how good God is. Amen and amen. You might have quiet today, but if I got to praise him by myself, I'm going to give God praise right now because I didn't have to be here this morning. You didn't have to be here this morning. You didn't have to be here this morning, but because of God's grace and his mercy, we're all here this morning to give God praise all over this sanctuary. Amen and amen. Miss Kim, if you will come and give us our scripture reading for this morning, and then Reverend Daisy Floyd will give us our prayer on this Sunday morning. To God be the glory. Good morning, church. Y'all know I'm loving this corner. Y'all can't see me. I thank God for that. <laughs> I'm going to be reading um, John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 17, coming from the NIV version. And this is Jesus talking the vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While eat every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. Yeah. You are already clean because right. of the word I have spoken to you. Yeah. Remain in me as I also remain in you. Yeah. No branch can bear fruit by itself. No. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Yeah. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. All right, all right. If you do not remain in me, you are like the branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branch, branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Yeah. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you can keep, forgive me, if you keep my commandments, commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Yes. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Yes. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You do not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command to love each one, each and every one. Amen. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us bow. Oh, precious Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly before you, O Lamb of God. We come, O Lamb of God, thanking you first for life, health, and strength. We come thanking you, O Lamb of God, for those that thought it was not robbery, but to come out to worship and to praise your holy name. Yes, God. They came out, O Lamb of God, because, Lord, this is the, the filling station that will, they could come and get their batteries checked, and they can come and get the air in their tires, and Come and get the motor check and the oil change and old Lamb of God fueled up with more water and antifreeze in the car so they won't freeze up. And old Lamb of God, we come, old Lamb of God, to 
as you, uh, you got the fluid and the brakes. And old Lamb of God, so they won't, when they step on the brakes, they won't just give out on them. And old Lamb of God, you, they came so you can check their automobiles all the way through. So they won't find no complication in that automobile. So when you put them out there on the road, Lord Jesus, to go to declare your holy and righteous word. And when they start up the car or push the button for the initial switch, it was start. So they came here to be all geared up and checked up so that they'll be able to get out on the, the road, the hedges and highways and declare your dying men and women that the wage of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life for that Lord I just want to say thank you and oh Lamb of God I want to thank you for the soul that uh, my group praising my Savior went out yesterday and won a soul for you that's what Christmas is all about and oh Lamb of God even up at Dollar General Dollar tree oh lamb of god a man was standing on the outside but lord you led me to lead him to the lord and he accepted you in his life as your personal as his personal savior lord thank you for that and oh lamb of god i ask you in the name of jesus because lord one of these days you're going to give us the last bit of diction and oh lamb of god we won't rest upon this earth no more but Oh, Lamb of God, what we do for you, what we do for Christ will last. But, oh, Lamb of God, when we stand before you, and then you will tell us, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on up a little higher, and I'll make you rule of many. But, oh, Lamb of God, until that time come, use us to the glory of God. Use us, oh, Lamb of God. When you speak to us, oh, Lamb of God, let us hear you because you said in your word, my sheep know my voice and strangers they will not follow. And oh Lamb of God, we just thank you, oh Lamb of God, that they would, even when you speak, oh Lamb of God, they will not procrastinate. They will get in a hurry to go and do what you have them to do. Just like you told Lazarus, just like you told uh, uh, S. Carol, Whatever you do, do it quickly. You telling us to do it quickly. Don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate. Go and do what the Lord say do. And oh, Lamb of God, we just want to say thank you now. Thank you for what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt. Thank you, oh, Lamb of God. Lord, I can go on and on, but the time won't permit. But Lord, I just want to say, Lord, I love you. I dedicate my whole life to you. And then, Lord, I know it's people sitting around here dedicate and have sold out to you. And, oh, Lamb of God, for this I say thank you. Thank you for the word in advance that's going to come forth, God, and that your man's servant will preach with the anointing of the Holy Ghost because he can't preach unless you preach through him. And, oh, Lamb of God, we just give you praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
if you will. Let's give the choir another hand of praise. Amen. A lot of times we come to worship and we rush worship. We want to get so fast and quick with worship over. But you can't hurry God. I say that you can't hurry God. God is going to have his way no matter whether you're here or whether you're not here. But we give God praise on this day. Because next Sunday we celebrate Christmas. The Sunday before Christmas. And any time that you can give God praise, you ought to not hesitate to worship God in the fullness of his name. To God be the glory. Thank you, choir, once more. And again, there's a word from the God on this day. If you will, stand with me to the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Once again, to our deacons, deaconesses, our leaders, our trustees, our finance team, to our sound ministry, every body represented here at the church, we thank God for you. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse six and seven. And it reads as this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and in his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth ever, even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach for your hearing for unto us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's once again that we come on this day just to say thank you. We thank you, God, because before we can love ourselves, you loved us first. We thank you, God, that when we arose this morning, you were right there. We thank you, God, that when we got comfortable and prepared ourselves for bed, you were right there. Even now, God, when we have dressed ourselves and fed ourselves and groomed ourselves to make it to worship one more time. You're still right there. God, we realize that there are some that has been with us but are not with us on this season. There are some that we crying out right now, God, that wish we can hug them again. Wish we can see their smile again. Wish we can hear their laughter again. But when we can't, God, you have filled the gap. You've been there. You're still right there. And God, we come this morning to give your name praise. Because you've been a mighty good God. Even when we didn't been good to ourselves, you've been good to us. Even when we didn't know where our next meal was going to come from, you've been good to us. Even when we didn't know how we was going to pay our bills, you've been good to us. Somebody ought to testify, God, that you've been good. You blew breath in our bodies this morning. You've been good. 
And God, when we counted our cars to come to worship this morning, there was no hurt, harm, or danger that kept us from being here. Truly, you've been good. So now, God, as we sit here to hear the message before Christmas morning, we ask God that you touch somebody right now. God, somebody came looking for a blessing. Somebody came to hear a word from thee. So God, take me out of the equation. Don't look at me this morning, God. Move me to the side and replace me with a whole lot of you. Let the people see you in me. God, that way when the word has been preached, God, they, it will go forth as pure gold. Oh, now, God, have your way over this congregation. And then, God, at the end of this sermon, let somebody say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Oh, we need you right now, God, than we've ever needed you before. We're getting ready to embark on a new year. But before we can go into the new year, we got to thank you for this year. Thank you, God. Thank you that we're still breathing. Thank you we can still feed ourselves. Thank you that we can still dress ourselves. Oh, well, God, we don't take that lightly because truly we didn't have to be here. So, God, every breath, every move we make, we ask for your holy and divine presence to be there. Oh, God, it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen, amen. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses 6 through 7. I want to preach for your blessed hearings this morning. For unto us, for unto us a child is born. We solicit your prayers on this day. My brothers and my sisters, during this time of the year, we sing songs of Christmas. Songs like joy to the world, the Lord has come. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Away in a manger. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la, la 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 la. But truly, we need the Lord to come. Because for the last three years, we have been in a state of mind that we haven't had much to be joyous about. Our faith has been tested. And even now, as we're sitting into the sanctuary this morning, somebody's faith is being tested right now. We've had to have to deal with viruses and with storms that we've never seen before. We've lost many loved ones along the way that we were close to that can't be here with us for this Christmas season. And during this time of the year, there is a great debate over people who refuse to even say Merry Christmas. Rather than saying Merry Christmas and mentioning the name of Christ, they would rather say Season's Greetings or happy holidays. And that's because they refuse to name the name Christ. All around us there are Christmas trees and ornaments and lights. All the other trappings of Christmas. Cards are sent, gifts are being wrapped. Uh, and yet still most people have no idea who Jesus really is. Isaiah leaves us no doubt as to who the child is that is mentioned in these verses. 
And when we look at the text, we find that Jesus is the embodiment of God's grace. And I want you to notice the phrase that is repeated twice in this text. It says that for unto us, unto us. Uh, let me make this very clear. What you and I really deserve, even when he says unto us, what we really deserve is hell. What we really deserve is death and annihilation. But unto us, he says that a child is born. And unto us, a son has been given. And according to Ephesians chapter 2, and you have been quickened who are dead and trespass in sin. And we were by nature children of the wrath. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. John 3, say, 3 says that he that believe not in condi is condemned already. But still our God says unto us. We deserve punishment but unto us. We should be dead in our graves this morning, but unto us. We deserve internal, eternal damnation, but unto us. The faults we have, the mistakes we've made, the things we have said, God should have punished us forever. But yet God says to us, unto us. Uh, he is the embodiment of God's grace. Listen, listen, now, now, we, when we sit here, we all need to understand that mercy is what God holds back from us. Yeah, yeah, that we deserve. But then, on the other hand, grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. And we definitely all need his mercy. We, we need God to hold back the punishment that he, he ought to meet out in our judgment. But because a whole lot of us did enough just yesterday that we ought to be in hell this morning. Enough of us did something just last night that we ought to be in hell. But God says his grace is sufficient. His grace woke me up this morning. His grace has me in the Lord's sanctuary. His grace has given me the strength to get out of my bed this morning and let me clothe myself and feed myself and in my right mind. And God does not owe me anything. Instead, I owe it all to him. He just gives it to me because of his grace. And you who are here this morning, you need to know that you will never, and I mean never, and get to enjoy God's grace and enjoy church until you begin to understand what grace really means. You will never shop in the Lord's house until you know what grace means. You, you, you will never raise your hand in the Lord's house until you know what grace means. Uh, 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 you ought to be in, 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 in the grave right now, and I don't care how good you look this morning. I, I don't care how pretty your hat is this morning. I, I don't care how good you look in your red and in your green this morning, how good your makeup look, if it, the, how good you look in your suit, if it had not been for the Lord's grace, you would be lost with no hope. God, God, God commanded his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, uh, God does not wait for you to get your act together. 
He, he does not wait till you decide it's your time to join the church. He sends Jesus while you are in your sins. He does not wait for you to read the Bible in its whole entirety. He does not uh, wait for you to join the Mount Zion church or any other church. He says, while you were in your sins, he became sin for us. I wish I had a witness this morning. I, I wish I had a crook like me in here this morning. I, I, I wish I had somebody who don't know that they past is not all that this morning. Uh, somebody here who knows that if the Lord hasn't covered you, you wouldn't even be here this morning. But thank God for his grace. Grace, 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 I say. Thank God for his grace. Because the word says amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That what saved the wretch like me. I, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Through many danger toys and snares, I have already come. But it was grace that brought me safe thus far. And it's going to be the grace that will lead me he is the embodiment of God's grace because he says unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. But the text also shows us that his God's glory. When looking at this text, Isaiah calls this boy a child and a son. He says for unto us a child is born and a son is given. He's a child and a son. And listen, the word son speaks a whole lot of his divinity. A child speaks of a whole lot of his humanity. He's a hundred percent God and man. And when looking at this, some people would have you to believe that the greatest miracle was his crucifixion. Others would say it was his resurrection. Some would point out the healing and his feeding of the fish and the five barley loaves of bread, or when he turned water into wine. But I would have to say different, that while all of these were great manifestations of his divine power, the greatest miracle was his incarnation. The day God became a man and remained God at the same time. Somebody ought to help me shout right here. He, he, he poured out himself into a body of weakness and death and let himself be born. He, he, he left the praises of the angels. He, he left the shining course of glory. He, he left the place where his garments were embroidered with stars. He, he left all of that and came down in a little girl's womb and allowed himself to be born which is nothing short of a miracle. Uh, we, we were talking about one who created the heavens and the earth. He, but he allowed himself to be born out of a little girl's womb. Uh, Lord have mercy. He, he is the one who created the earth and tacked it down with daffodils and lilies uh, 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 was where he was born of a peasant girl's womb. Yes. And instead of the baby looking like the mama, the mama ended up looking like the baby. Yes. Somebody ought to help me preach. It was the, the event of eternity and the advent of the contents of time. 
uh, divinity came to the tabernacle in a tent of clay. God, God let dust be painted on his spirit. That the king of the universe, the sovereign of the creation, uh, becomes an embryo. He, he's so human that he let himself be born. So divine that he said that you must be born again. He's human that he got thirsty. Human that he got so hungry. But then he said that I am the bread of life. He, he says, come unto me, all who have labored, and I will give thee rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So human that he wept at the grave of Lazarus. Yet divine, he said that I am the resurrection and the light. He died on the cross. Yet, the Bible tells us early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hands. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection was not his greatest miracle. The greatest miracle is that he came in the first place uh, because, uh, because he didn't have to do it. And this is what you need to know. He, he didn't have to do it. He didn't come for nice people. He, he didn't come for anybody who is worth anything. He, he came for a wretch and a crook like me. A messy person like me and you. For a liar like me and you. For trash cans of trash like me and you. He, he, he traded it all just for me. And if I had to say that back in the old school church, if I'd have shouted that just now back in the old school church, uh, they would have been running all around this church right now. If I'd have said God was good, they'd have been running right now. If I'd have said God woke me up, they'd have been running right now. If I'd have said he made a way out of no way, they would have been running right now. If I would have said he put food on my table, they would have been running right now. If I would have said he clothed me in my right mind, they would have been running right now. Because if the Lord had done anything for you, if the Lord made a way for you, you don't have to run right now, but you ought to give God some praise. Because somebody would have shouted, preach the word, Reverend. If you're talking about Jesus, he's a friend of mine. I wouldn't have a religion if I couldn't feel it sometimes. Uh, and some of you are sitting in here this morning like you're supposed to be here. Uh, like God owe you something. Like God had to come for you. Uh, we are all nobody. But he loves us so much that he gave his life just for us. Uh, go ahead. I know somebody want to shout. You, you know you want to shout because when you think about what God has done for you only in this year, you, you ought to be ready to shout. When, when you think about the many ways God has made for you and opened doors for you in this year, you, you ought to want to give God some praise. How God has kept you breathing just in this year. You, you ought to want to give God some praise and, and knowing that you don't even deserve it. Yeah, you ought to give him praise. I, I was sinking deep in sin, uh, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. 
From the waters he lifted me. Now I said now. Now I said now. Safe am I. I was nobody. But he lifted me. Uh, love lifted me. The Bible says when nothing else could help. It was love that lifted me. When my friends betrayed me. Love lifted me. When I was financially broke, it was love that lifted me. Is there anybody up in here uh, who, uh, who can testify that it was nobody but God's love that lifted you? It was not my contacts on Facebook. It was not my account on my uh, financial bank. Not my church family. But it was nobody but Jesus. Uh -huh. He's the embodiment of God's grace. He, he's God's glory. Uh, then uh, he's the embodiment of God's greatness. For unto us a child is born. And for us, unto us, a son is given. But here is the shout. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. When we think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for us, the shout is, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In other words, he's a rock in a weary land. He, he's a shelter in the time of storm. He, he's Jesus in the morning. Jesus at noonday. Jesus in the midnight hour. And, and in the scripture, Jesus is called by over 255 names. Because one name does not describe who he is. When you call the name Reverend Bloom, it means nothing. Uh, when you call the name Reverend Richardson, Reverend Floyd, it means nothing. Matter of fact, that's all you get. That's all you get. You just get Cartrell Bloom, Reverend Floyd, Reverend Richardson. That's all you get. But when you start talking about Jesus, the Bible tells us that he's the day spring of Israel. He's the eternal God. He's wonderful. He's a counselor. He's a strong tower and a rock in a weary land. He's a lily in the valley. I, I feel like preaching right now. He's a rose of Sharon. He, he's a bright and the morning star. He's the word that became flesh and then dwelt all among us. He's the glory and the unbegotten Father. In other words, in other words, whatever you name him uh, and whatever you need him, he's got a name for it. But, but in the book of Revelations, book of Revelations 2 and 17 says that he has a name that hasn't even been revealed yet. I want to help somebody. There's a name that hasn't even come out yet. It's like Michael Jordan tennis shoes. You got to wait for it. It's a name that hasn't even been revealed yet. Because all the names in the scripture, there's a name that hasn't not even been called yet. It says, to him that overcome. I will give him hidden manna uh, of a white stone and a new name. Stand and the new name will be written 
on that stone. Yes, I want you to hear me. And the only one who will know that name yes. is the one who will get the stone because of their relationship with him. In other words, when we get to heaven, there will be a name for Jesus that I will know and you will know. Because the name for him will be written on the stone given to you according to your relationship with him. Ah, oh God. And I don't even know what that name is yet. I have no idea what the name is. But I'm shouting over it right now. Because I already know about the 255 other names that he is. And if I can shout over those names, if I can lift up holy hands, over those names. If I can run over those names. I, I, there is a name I can shout that I don't even know yet. All I know is that he was born in Bethlehem. He was reared in Nazareth. And he was baptized in the Jordan. He performed miracles in the desert place. There was a woman with the issue of blood and she spent all that she had and instead of getting better, the woman became worse. But then one day, Jesus was passing by and she grabbed on his clothing and she said that if, or I feel like preaching, if I can just touch him of his garment. She said that I know I will be made whole. They were out in a desert place and nowhere to buy any food. And this little boy had fish and five loaves of bread. And Jesus took that two fish and five loaves of bread and he fed 5,000 not including any women or any children. What a sweet name it is. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Rapha. The God who is our healer. Somebody here knows him as a fat right fixer. Somebody knows him as a mind regulator. Somebody knows him when you were broke and the Lord put money in your pocket. You got your own name for him. I, I, you got your own name for him. Somebody here is under depression and don't know who the Lord is. So I'm come here to tell you that you ought to lift up your bow down head. You got your own name for him. But if the Lord has been good to you, if the Lord made ways for you, if the Lord put food on your table, you ought to give God praise right now. Never thought you would stop crying in the midnight hour, but God dried up your tears. You ought to help me testify that made me weeping may endure it for one night, but joy will come in the morning. You got a name for him. Joy in the morning. Joy in the midnight hour. Joy in the noonday. Joy will come because he's able to make ways out of no way. Your enemy tried to stop you, but look where the Lord has brought you. You ought to look at somebody and tell somebody that you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He helped me raise your children. Tell him thank you. He gave you a job in the morning. Tell him thank you. He healed your body of sickness. Tell him thank you. You got a house to sleep in. Tell him thank you. You got a church to worship in. Tell him thank you. 
But more than that, the Bible says he died. Didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. But more than that, he's on the right hand making intersections for us. But more than that, he's coming back again. Oh, come on again. I want you to be, I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to tell your neighbor, neighbor, excuse me, while I check off my list. Neighbor, excuse me, while I check off my list. I want to check off the list that he gave me. I want to check off the things that he's done for me. But more than that, he's coming back again. Now I want you to say, excuse me, while I thank him right now. Thank him, thank him, thank him for holding me. Thank him for protecting me. Thank him for shielding me. Thank him for keeping me. Thank him for bringing me. Thank him for lifting me. Thank him for saving me. Thank him for raising me up. Thank him for trusting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody got anything to thank him for? You ought to thank him right now. All over the sanctuary. You ought to stand to your feet and give God a praise. Come on and thank him all over the sanctuary. Because you've been a rock in a weary land. You've been my shelter in a time of storm. Lord, you've been my savior. You've been my rock. You've been my redeemer. You've been my strong tower. You've been my everything I need. And I want you to look at somebody and tell your neighbor right in the face. Say to your neighbor some glad morning when this life is over. I'm going to fly away. Look at your neighbor and look at your other neighbor and tell your neighbor some glad morning when this life is over. I will fly away. Come on and give God a praise. I will, I will, I will, I will call the name of anybody. Call on the name or anybody that you have in your mind and I'll reach above it and write the name of Jesus. Call on your mother and your father and I'll reach above it and write the name Jesus. I'll call the name of your best basketball player, your best uh, soccer player, tennis player and I'll reach above it and write the name of Jesus. Because there's a name that is above every name. That when you call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every knee shall bow. It didn't say some knees. It didn't say because of your status. It says every knee shall bow. It didn't say because you're a deacon or a preacher or a deaconess or a trustee or whatever you are. It says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Write the name of anybody who comes to your mind and I'll reach above it and write the name Jesus. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, choir. Oh, come on, give God praise in here. Come on, give God praise in here. Come on, give God praise in here. Write the name of anybody and I'll reach above it and write the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you live, gated or ungated. I'll reach above it and write the name Jesus. Oh, come on. 
the doors of the church is now open. Will there be one that will come before the Christmas comes in and give God your hand and say, God, I, I thank you for the many blessings that you've stored. I, I thank you for everything that you've done in my life because with, without you, I wouldn't have made it this far. Is there one right now who wants to come and come down and give God your hand and say, God, I thank you for the many blessings. Will there be one? Will there be one right now? I know God is speaking to somebody right now who does not know God as their personal Lord and Savior. This is an opportunity to say, God, I, I, I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for all that you've done for me. Come on, choir, sing it. Will there be one? Until the going of the same. Oh, he's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy. Praise him. Praise him. My God, praise him. Jesus. Blessed Savior. For he's worthy to. Come on, let's say. Whoa, from the rising. to praise him. praise him. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Let's just say that. For he's worthy. He's worthy. Chairman and Reverend Richardson down front because we truly need to ask God to keep us as one accord. Because none of us can do anything without God. our finance team to come our deaconesses to come our trustees Miss Monica our secretary
Have your way, God. Have your way, Father. Have your way, God. Most holy and everlasting Father. God, you just told us that when we call on your name, call anybody else's name and go above it and write the name of Jesus. God, we come this day to call on your name. Realizing that there is no other name that we can call on but the name of Jesus. You said in your word, God, that, that when we call on your name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that you are God and besides you there is no other God we thank you on this day for what our ears have heard and what our eyes have seen from 9 o'clock to this hour because nobody could have done it but you Nobody could have brought so many people out to see that's what says the Lord but you. God, you, you were sleeping on the boat, ship. And a storm arose and they came and woke you. Their faith was shaken and they did not know if they were going to make it. You stood still and said, peace, be still. God, that's like us right now. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what this week is going to bring. We don't know what the new year is going to bring. But you stood flat-footed. And you are saying to us, peace, be still. Woo. Peace, be still. No matter what the situation is, God, you're saying, peace, be still. When we don't know when and where our finances may come from the week after week, you said in your word, peace, be still. Woo. When we woke up this morning, we didn't know if we was going to be sick in our body. We didn't know if we were going to make it to put one foot in front of the other. But you said in your word, peace. Woo! Be still. Now, God, as we stand here, the leaders of your church, this body of leaders that you chose. We stand here, God, in, in unified of one to say, because your word said, peace, be still. We're standing here under your tutelage, God. Testifying and decreeing that we are one body. Working under one God. When the devil comes and tries to intervene this leadership. Let us be reminded that we all serve the same God. Black, white, blue, Hispanic, Asian, that's only one God. And the blood 
is still warm. The blood is still red. But one God. Now God, as I hold my hand over your leadership, I ask God that you touch every individual. Woo! God, touch every individual's heart. That God, whatever you would have them to be, how you would have them to fill this position, I ask God that you touch their heart. As pastor of this church, it's not about me. You chose me for such a time. I didn't ask you for this position, but you chose me for such a time. And God, because you thought I was right for the position, I pray to God right now that you would have me to lead in a way that you would have me to lead. God, oh God. God, I, I, I ask that you would have me to lead your people in a way that you would have me to lead. Not about what somebody say. Not about how they feel about me. But God, show them that you chose me. And because you chose me, I'm going to fulfill your glory. If you chose me, I'm going to preach your word. Because you chose me, I'm going to teach your people. Talk about me as much as you please. Because you said the more you talk, I'm going to bend my knees. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess. And God, when we come together on December the 28th, let your spirit reign in this place. Let your spirit cover your sanctuary. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come to your people. That we may continuously to be who you have us to be. God, we need you. We need you, God. You're showing us and giving us things that we have not seen. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. God, in the name of Jesus. I dedicate this church and your people on this day, the Sunday before your day, your birthday as we celebrate Christ. I dedicate this today, God. What we see today, let this go out from now and to the future. That every boy, every girl, every woman, every man can see that the Mount Zion Baptist Church is the beacon of light up on this hill. That we can go out and tell others what thus says the Lord. Have your way in your people. Touch the back door to the front door. From side wall to the other wall. From pew to pew. Touch everybody in this place. Touch every mind in this place. Touch every heart in this place. And we give your name praise, God. We celebrate you right now. You are mighty God. You are mighty God. You are a counselor. 
You're a provider. You're a protector. You're a keeper. You're a savior. And God, we lift our holy hands today in one accord that we're going to do what you have us to do. Here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church, have your way over your people. Touch your people right now as we end this prayer, God. We say thank you. Thank you, God. This legacy was left here, God. This legacy was left, God. And one of the legacies Reverend White said he wanted to see is this church come together. God, let it happen on this day. God, let it happen on this day. Do not let his work go in vain, God. Let it happen today. Oh, God, we give your name praise. Oh, God, as we say thank you, it's in the precious name of Jesus. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise. Let us stand for the closing, please. If our hearts and minds are one, may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace this day and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. amen.